first I want to thank Dr. Lipton for having me, but um, I don't know if I'm really wanting to necessarily go into the news, but it's concerning what we're talking about tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you know, I, it, a lot of times in my life, things are just divinely set. Mm -hmm. um, moments happen so organically and they're uh, destined to happen in such a way that, you know, we women, we are so strong, we have to deal with so much, we yeah. go through everything. And if you look back on your life, like I can look back on mine in these tough times or a moment like this, that it would be where I have to kind of push through. Yeah. Um, it's just, I also have to thank God because it's profound that I'm in this space, yeah. receiving yeah. that news. And yeah. this is a space of women who have suffered the same thing yes. I have suffered. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, it just really, will, this moment will push my advocacy mm. for fibroids yeah. for women and advocate for them to advocate for themselves um, in the space of health care when it comes to our bodies and being in the know and demanding that our doctors prioritize what is best for us in the healthcare system. So for me, um, as tough as this moment is, I am I'm a thank I thank God for it. Yeah. I do thank God for it. And um, so my history with fibroids is a long one. Um, so I did not find out I had high fibroids until I was about 28 years old. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, yeah, I was about 28. And so I was on a journey at that moment. I, wait, my big old picture up there, Lord. <laughs> Girl, you look good. <laughs> Y'all know I'm still silly. But um, I um, was right, 28, you know, that year, that time when you're ready to have children, you know, and you never know anything is wrong with your body until something's wrong with your body right. or you know what you call wrong with your body but hell as much as we know fibroids could just be a part of our suffering that we get through in life um and we are blessed with doctors like dr lipton to get us through that's right um so i'm ready to have a baby and i seek, seek a fertility clinic and um you know i've been going to OBGYN, taking care of myself very well all my life um, never been on any type of birth control so, because I always believe those type of things would give you something like a fibroid would, you know, mess with your body in some type of way. So I was very aware of my body and always got checked on every single year. So it was very alarming for me to find out that I had fibroids. Um, and I actually didn't find them out until I had gotten pregnant. And I, um, so I had gotten pregnant and we were, we were excited because we were there saying we can't get pregnant. And when I went back from my first, when I went for my first appointment, I was pregnant. And so I was so excited. And then, uh, the doctor said, well, you know, you have a fibroid. And I was like, well, what is that exactly? You know, I didn't, was not familiar with it necessarily, which is crazy again, because here I am late in my late twenties, had been to the doctor my whole life and it had never been, been brought up to me as an African-American woman, knowing that we suffer the most. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, they told me I had a fibroid and I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean with the pregnancy? Because it's in the same space, right? It's in the uterus. Um, and so they said, well, um, let's just watch it. One of them is pretty large. Um, you know, let's just, just pay attention to it. Uh, I got to be almost about, I guess it was about three months. And at that point I started having complications and I started to just have like serious pain in my stomach. Like, I'm sorry if it's too long. You can cut me off. It's a long no, road. No, 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 I'll this speed is it perfect. Up. No, no, no. I'll speed it up. It's fine. So I started having like serious pains and long story short on this one, I had gone to the doctor on and off. Each time they said, we hear a heartbeat. We don't hear a heartbeat. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, so finally, my doctor said, you know, I'm going to send you to a fibroid specialist. And I'm like, well, okay, great. Uh, so I went and mind you, this entire time, I am starving myself. I am on the craziest vegan diet you can even think of because I am at that point trying to save my baby. I'm down to like 140 pounds, if that. And um, anyway... I got to the point where I ended up suffering a miscarriage and it was because the fibroids outgrew the baby. And so here I am, a young woman who could have had 
who could have been told that I had these fibroids earlier on, they could have been dealt with, taken out, whatever, and I would have been able to have um, my child at that moment, but here I am suffering a miscarriage. Go on, get a myomectomy. We all know what that is too well. Um, and I got the myomectomy, and after that I'm expecting, you know, I should be able to carry and everything will be great, I'll be fine. Went on, um, went on to have more problems with fertility and ended up, um, getting pregnant and the fibroids of course were still there you know they come back those little suckers they just grow yeah. they don't care they you know care. Um, there's like a window where you need to be getting pregnant when they uh, you know are dormant there but when you're pregnant the hormones make them grow so it's like a fight so I'm pregnant and little PJ that's my daughter she her big old self, she just beat them out. That's right. But I suffered. Yeah. I was like on bed rest and all this. But I'm like, come on, fight through, baby. Like kick them That's balls right. like a tennis ball, or, you know, a dodgeball, baby. That's just right. duck it out, right. you know, get out of this uterus because I, you know, I want to have a baby. Right. And anyway, she's my miracle baby. She made it through. Yeah. She was my rainbow baby. Yeah. And um, y'all show some love for rainbow baby. Rainbow baby. Um, <laughs> You know, but here's the thing with fibroids as time went on. You know, of course, I was blessed enough to be able to have um, my daughter Pilar, but they come back, you yeah. know. And I thought, you know, well, I, I don't really have necessarily that guy that I want another child. I'm good. You know, if they there, we living together good. You know, we good. All of a sudden, they just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I started suffering silently. That is the thing about fibroids. It is a silent suffering um and you know i speak about fibroids very freely but it's the the side effects of fibroids fibroids is not something that you want to speak about you don't want to talk about the fact that you again look pregnant you don't want to talk about the fact that you're bleeding the way you are you know you're constantly fatigued you know we women we we you know we we black women try to be so strong so we try to stay as far away as from that word lazy as we can but you really can't get, drag yourself out of the type of fatigue that fibroids uh, that symptom can do to you um, back pain and just the the mental of it all of it just got to be so so bad so one day I ended up uh, my family has a charity it's called Jose Feed the Hungry um, yeah. thank you um, if you would like to contribute it's for Hosea.com and I was at our grand opening and so I'm sitting there again I started wearing all these peplums that particular day I had a big old fur thing at the bottom you know but I had legs so I had I was like I'm gonna give you legs and right here but you know we couldn't do the waist um, and I was sitting there and it was almost my time to speak and Dr. Lipman walked up and my aunt, she's just jolly and just like so full of personality. And when she loves you, she loves you big. And she was just going on and on about Dr. Lipman and who he was to the community and, and all of this. And I was like, oh wow, like that is so great. So then right before she brought over to the stage and he donated over $200,000 to um, our family's charity in order for us to wow. get the building that we were wow. in to operate in and I was like wow you know what a sacrifice this is money he had saved up um, and um, anyway I was like that is such a sacrifice what a great man um, didn't hear the part about him being a fibroid surgeon or at that specialist at that moment I'm just like wow this guy this is great um, so he walks off and I'm thinking I'm like okay so I believe he walked up to me or I walked up to him to thank him for his con contribution and um, he gave me his card. I think he said Dr. Lippman. It was, I can't remember how it happened. But anyway, at that moment, I saw he, he said he's a fibroid specialist, et cetera. And that something said, you know, I meet people all the time, right? But just something about, I said, let me, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. He mentioned Cynthia Bailey and she had done something with him in the past. And I had remembered when she, you know, had had her situation with it. And so I said, you know, what? I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. And I called him and guys, I went to go for the consultation and he's, I mean, it happened so fast, scheduled the surgery. And I told him, all, I mean, he literally took a list. Like he just sat there and I was able, you know, most doctors, they rush you through. You got a fibroid, I'm gonna zap it out, boom. 
No, he asked me, he, he really genuinely asked me each and everything I was suffering from. What are you going through? And for me to be able to, it was therapeutic to just be able to list those things out that I don't get to talk about to anybody. You know, we just kind of live our life through these fibroids. And he said, one by one, these are going to be gone when you finish. And I was like, okay, I believe you. And so he did the surgery. Literally, guys, like... It's like the small, it's, it's literally nothing. It, it, like where he went in, it just was enough for a needle. I actually have a bruise right here, bigger than that for my V, you know. So he, it was just a little bitty um, cut right here. Nothing, like my aftercare wasn't bad, took the little medication, it was great. So he, so uh, a couple weeks after that, he said, you're gonna be good. You let me know how this list starts checking off, like how you start crossing these things. And I went back to him, I believe it was like a couple, a month or so later. And I said, well, this, this, this is here. A little bit of bleeding is still here, there. And I am here standing, I'm sitting here, not standing here. I'm sitting here today to tell you that I do not even remember half of the things on that list because my life has completely changed. My quality of life, the way I think about myself, the confidence that I have is, is just profound in what the uh, UFE, is what it, mm -hmm. UFE, what it did for me. I mean, I, I was, you know, and being in the public eye, you know, she, mm -hmm. she talks about being in the public eye, it could be brutal. Yeah. You know, people are not kind. Mm -hmm. They're constantly asking you, are you pregnant? Um, and, if, and if you say you're not pregnant, like, oh, well, you're fat or whatever. Me, I'm not one to necessarily care about those things because after I had my daughter, listen, this body gonna give what it give. I gave a baby. That's right. <laughs> I gave a baby. So That's I don't right. care what it's giving you. All right. Um, but for someone to keep asking you, are you pregnant? That was the thing that I was like, okay, because that's the thing we suffer from with fertility. But afterwards, you know, I felt completely great. I definitely I'm here tonight because I want every single woman who is suffering to speak out, to uh, lend their voice to the cause. If you haven't gotten checked, go get checked. If you need any type of treatment, go to Dr. Lippman and find it out. You know, it would seem like it's something brand new, but they mentioned it to me back then. But they said, if you get UFE, you won't be able to have a baby. That's what they said. Um, but that's not true. A lot of women have had children after UFE. Um, have carried them themselves and all of that. So um, that's my story in a nutshell. No, we <laughs> I know we got it. more talking to do, but I just want y'all to know my story from beginning to the end. That's right. Because can't nobody tell your story like, like you me. can tell your story. My <laughs>